coach, 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 how many fingers I got? Three and three. No one. Yeah. Final seconds tick away, and the Riverhawks earn an 11 point victory that will put them back in the America East title game. 75 64, and that game was much closer than the 11 point margin. It's so important to keep that game in mind. Losing to UMass Lowell in the semifinals was incredibly hard for us to take because we genuinely thought that we were going to be able to get to where we wanted to go, which was win American East Championship. Last year we brought a brand new team together. We had very low expectations from everybody looking out on the outside in, and we surpassed all those expectations. All of us, we all did. We were ranked seventh in the preseason poll. We ended up being third. We were on track to being top two teams in the conference, which has never been done before in UNH history with a brand new group of guys. So just all that in itself gives me hope and encouragement and confidence coming into my final year that we can do anything. As much as I love the Wildcats song, I would like to play it every time they win. I expect regression from the New Hampshire Wildcats. I'm with you. I think this is a middle of the pack team. I don't think they're going to contend this year. It's going to be an interesting, a lot unknown with the New Hampshire Wildcats, in my opinion. When the season ended last year, changes were made. UNH is parting ways with head basketball coach Bill Harrion. Today, Athletics Director Allison Rich saying it is time for new leadership to advance the program. A national search will begin for a new coach. It's certainly, end of an era for UNH basketball. Yeah, good luck to Coach Harrion, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see who comes in. I am proud to introduce the 21st head coach of Wildcats men's basketball, Coach Nathan Davis. What we want to be successful, we want to win championships. That's why you compete, that's why you keep scoring time out, is to be a championship quality team, and that's going to be our goal year in, year out, is to put a team on the floor that you can be proud of for how hard they play, how well they play together, and also hopefully hang some banners. Davis comes to dorm after eight years as head coach at Bucknell. Davis, he led Bucknell to two March Madness appearances and was the top assistant during their 05 and 06 tournament victories. Bringing in new players as well as a new coaching staff and meshing them with existing players, that can be a challenge. How is that process going? Mod Robinson, he's a prototypical point guard. He's a guy that can create shots for other guys. He can get to the rim, he can make shots. He's somebody that I think we're gonna count on heavily to, to be kind of the, the quarterback of our offense. Naeem is a grad transfer in the one-year MBA program coming from uh, Edinburgh University. Scored a lot of points and can really shoot the ball. He's got a physically mature body, obviously, being in his fifth year in college. Has played at a high level, so he's a guy that we think can come in and, and, and fight to contribute right away. Paul Gekmar, transfer in this year um, from Hillsborough Junior College. He's actually Australian from Perth, Australia. He's long and athletic, can defend multiple positions, really block shots. Offensively, he can step out and shoot the ball with range. He can post up, he can put the ball on the floor some. So he's a very talented young man. Dior Davis, one thing I would say on the basketball court is he's fast. He's as fast with the basketball and his ability to get up and down the floor as, as anybody I've coached. And I think he has tremendous defensive ability as well. He's got great hands, great quickness, and, and I think that's really exciting as far as what he brings to the table on the court. Davide is our, our lone true freshman, came to us from Italy, but at 6'5", he really shoots the ball well. He's long, can defend. Um, 
has done a great job picking up what's going on like, the, like they all have, and I think he's got a very bright bright future here. Alex is from the area and, you know, is, I think had a dream to be able to play college basketball and to be able to, to help our basketball program. I mean, he wants to do whatever whatever is necessary for us to be successful, and anytime you're around people like that who are unselfish and excited to be a part of something, um, they're, they're always fun to be around. My favorite thing to cook is like a steak, but that's not very often I get to do that. So I'd probably say like, just like some chicken and rice, just grill some chicken, whip up some fresh rice, some sriracha in there, some avocado. Oof. Uh, but I can, I, can, I can whip a lot up. So just like, give me, give me some tests and I'll, I'll figure it out. Paul, you are a good cook, but I am the best cook in, um, 71 Manor Street, correct? Um, no, I think it's um, Clarence. Clarence the test. makes some nice mac and cheese and some nice chicken. Well, I, yeah. I'm a Jamie can cook, though. He can cook. He can cook, so. What would Which you say your good. best meal is? I'm going to probably go with the Chipotle chicken pasta. I was saying, you made yeah. some chicken one day that I yeah. thought looked fire. Chipotle chicken pasta. I can't tell you the recipe or the secret, but. We've heard about the debate on who's the best chef on the team. We're wondering who your, your take is on that. I had Jackson's food, Jackson was pretty good, so gotta give it to JB. I know I personally can't cook, but you know, I'm learning. CD likes to chef it up, JB can chef it up. Well, I'm probably gonna go with Paul for best chef on the team. I give it to Jackson, since he's my roommate last year, and I kind of, you know, fed off him a little bit. But I'd say Clarence is definitely close. I feel like he makes more of like the larger meals and cooks for hours and then eats, but Jackson's like easy, just quick meals that are good. I'm team Clarence always with the best chef. I don't know, it's way, it's just a different level of like, than everyone else. Um, oh, okay, let me, let me eliminate Paul from that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul loves when CD cooks, so um, I'm, I'm gonna eliminate Paul and CD and Jackson, so I have to clarify, Jackson is like a grill guy. You know, when we're hanging out with the team on the weekends, so Jackson is the guy that's gonna make her food on the grill. But CD is the guy that's gonna make like a five star restaurant meal. Like in the house. It's a classy, you know, I don't know. Like a lot of some things that I never saw in my life, CD be making them like an experienced chef. So yeah, I'm gonna take CD. In my house, I haven't really tried many people's food. I do think probably Paul. Paul cooks the most and his food smells the best. Uh, I would say like CD and Paul, like like they they post a lot what they make, so I'll have to say either one of them too, but JB he comes over and grills a little bit, so he made some grilled chicken, some hot dogs, some burgers, so I think I think it's really up in the air, but if I had to say I'd probably say Clarence too. The best chef on the team, even though Coach Davis makes a great steak, I would say it's Clarence Daniels. Best mac and cheese I've ever had, so this is a very controversial statement. And my answer could get me in trouble. Um, and I'm going to go with me. I am the best chef on the team. You're looking at them. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Can you not interrupt the documentary? We're making a movie here. Jim and Nate. Rex, he's a terrific defender, a really good athlete, a very capable shooter, and a guy that I think, along with a lot of our guys, has a really high upside and, and continues to get better. John Wellman, he's a really terrific three-point shooter, and he's got a very high basketball IQ. Seems to be somebody that's that's pretty focused, focused on doing the things that he needs to do both on and off the court and having success. Promise was unfortunately missed all of last year with a, with a severe knee injury, but he's back, but been really impressed with 
with athleticism, his ability to finish around the basket, plays really hard. Christian Moore, right now he's he's proven to be a shot maker. He's terrific in, in terms of you know being able to catch and shoot the basketball, but he can also put the ball on the floor, create um, some different scoring opportunities for both himself and his teammates. Trey Woodyard is a extraordinarily bright player, understands what's going on, moves the ball. He's a capable shooter, and I think one of the things he's best at is when he gets in the paint as far as scoring. He's got good moves in there. He can post up in multiple ways, finish around the basket. And like I said, he's a really bright player, understands defensive positioning, understands what we're doing offensively. Clarence Daniels, the returning first-team All-League player, is an extraordinarily talented young man. He can score from all three levels. He is capable to be a really good defender, especially on the ball. He is one of the guys that have been really impressed with his work ethic, his willingness to learn, try to improve himself, and his, and his willingness to get in the gym and spend the time he needs to get better. Jackson Baker, in his sixth year of college basketball, so he's got tremendous experience. He's a versatile guy. He's obviously known for his shooting and ability to stretch the floor. And can be a weapon as far as putting the ball in the basket off, off catch and shoots. Since, since this coach coaches arrived here, I had a really big expectations from myself because they they put they put every every trust in me. I could I could say that way. Um, I felt how I got better, and it was like the best feeling in the world. You know, I, I was pretty excited, and I couldn't wait for the season to start. And then you know, one practice, I, I'm never gonna forget. It was like September 27th. So yeah, it's gonna be for always in my head, and you know. I'm, like pick and roll stuff, I'm trying to roll inside, catch a lob, score, and then I don't know where my knee is. I, I heard some cracks, some pop, I don't even know, but I was more shocked than I was in pain because my first thought was like, oh my God, my ACL is gone. Like, I'm not gonna play no more. It was like the first second, I'm not playing this game no more ever. Am I, am I, am I gonna come back? He's one of my best friends on the team, so I mean, it's hard to see him how he is right now and just to see he's worked so hard and what he's going through, but he's been there every single day, weight room, film, practice, and he's been nothing but supportive. He's been a great energy guy, and he's given what he can to the team. That's all, that's all we need. Now, thanks to my, um, my athletic trainer, Matt Car Carmichael, I'm doing a really good job. You know, um, I still have a long way to go, but um, yeah, I think I'm just like, you know, put some time in this, trust the process, and try to come back as you know, strong as possible because I really want to help this team win. So we heard that you got compared to Jim Carrey and you did not know who Jim Carrey was. I didn't know who Jim Carrey was. I don't watch a lot of movies. I told you, my day in the life, like I don't do, you know. Coach Guzman actually said you look like Jim Carrey. He was on his head. And Rex was like, who's Jim Carrey? And we all just lost our minds on him. So and there's his age and what you can teach that kid. I didn't know who Jim Carrey was. Every single other person on the team knew who he was. Even the coaches knew who he was. That's crazy. I don't know how you grow up and not know who Jim Carrey is, but he is from Utah, so it kind of makes sense. I didn't know Rex didn't know who Jim Carrey is, but we can't expect too much out of Rex. He's from Utah. <laughs> I love Rex though. <laughs> That's my guy. Jim Carrey's pretty popular, so for him not knowing it like kind of like took me back, like especially knowing how many movies Jim Carrey is in and how popular he is. I'm like, like come on. Come on. You know, I kind of let it go because for Rex is Rex, so you know a lot of things we have to work around with him. But he's a fun guy. Can't really describe Rex. Rex is like you know you never know what you're gonna get from him. Rex really doesn't know what's going on. I'm a, I'm gonna give you two movies, Rex. I'm gonna give you The Mask, and I'm gonna give you Liar Liar. Those two movies right there, they're must-sees, and until he watches them, I will not rest. Um, typically, makes sense. It just makes sense, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that guy's from Utah, so I'm not surprised. And he looks exactly like Jim Carrey, so pull up a picture of Jim Carrey and put it next to Rex's face whenever you use this clip. Yeah, I look like him, I mean, kinda. Like, nah, I didn't think so. He's cuter than me. Uh, that's it. They can make fun of me. I don't watch movies that much. Jim Carrey. I think. I think. Um, I actually have like a flag thing in my room with Jim Carrey, like a meme. Um, he's an actor, right? I don't know what movies he was in, but um, yeah, he's an actor. My name is Jimmy Allen. I'm from West Point, New York. I'm the 
associate head men's basketball coach at the University of New Hampshire. Luis Guzman, New York City, assistant coach for the University of New Hampshire. My name is Tyler Wilson. I'm from New York City. I am an assistant coach for the UNH men's basketball team. I played basketball at Emory and Henry College in Virginia, and then I was fortunate to be hired by my college basketball coach, Bob Johnson, and I started my coaching career there. Uh, after that, I moved to the United States Naval Academy. I was able to coach there for six years under Don DeVoe and with some great coaches and an opportunity to learn a ton um, and really get my career going. Moved from Navy to Wofford College in Spartanburg, South Carolina with Mike Young. Coached there for two years and then I left there to go to Averett University in Virginia and become the head men's basketball coach. Before then moving to Army West Point as an assistant under Zach Spiker and then I became the head basketball coach there. Uh, this past year coming to the University of New Hampshire with Coach Davis. I played at Temple University, played four years there. I was a starting point guard for three years. Also played overseas, Dominican Republic, Mexico, um, Spain, Mongolia, Colombia, Puerto Rico, and Slovakia. My coaching experience has been unique. I worked at the NBA League office, did basketball operations, and then started my coaching career at Temple as a grad assistant, then went from Temple to Ryder as a player development coach. Then I got my assistant position at Moreau Junior College down in New York. And then from there, I went down to Florida at Stetson University, I was there for three years. And then I also coached the Dominican Republic national team in the World Cup in China in 2019. And then my previous year, I was at Albany. And then this year, I'm here at the University of New Hampshire. I played at Manhattan College for four years. I won two championships there, went to the NCAA tournament twice. I became a special assistant to the head coach at Manhattan College for two years. And after those two years, I became an assistant coach. And then I've been an assistant coach since, and now that journey's taken me here to Munich. Well, I think the big thing is, is we want to make sure our guys understand our goal is to make sure that they can reach their dreams both on and off the court. We want them to, off the court, be able to get a great education, position themselves when basketball is done, that they can have live successful lives. At the same time, we want to make sure they understand we want them to become as good a player as they can be. We want to develop them so that they can play for as long as they want. We want to help the team as a, as a group reach its full potential. We can reach our full potential to the team and individually year in, year out, we'll have a great opportunity to compete for the America East um, year in, year out, which is the ultimate goal. The season is underway. Happy holidays to those of you who celebrate opening day of college basketball season. It's a New England showdown in college basketball here on a Tuesday night in Durham, New Hampshire, as the UNH Wildcats out of America East host the Brown Bears from the Ivy League off of two narrow defeats against tough competition.
His three is good. Clarence Daniels unconscious right now. And there's just nothing you can do about that. Clarence Daniels, a contested three, and he drills it. Clarence Daniels, the star of the show, a career-high 36 points, nine rebounds, and a couple of steals along with two assists. He's a pretty good player. I mean, everyone knows that. The best part was he had 35, and I don't think he played the best game he's got in. That's a team that I think they were picked third or fourth in the Ivy League. Yeah. Right? They came in expecting to be competitive in their league with a chance to win. It's a good league. It's a great win. It's a great one on at home, right? We had a lot of great stuff at both ends. I think we all can agree we got to get better. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Other than the, about the four minute stretch in the first half and the four minute stretch to start the second half, we ran them out of the building, right? If we want to get where we go, want to go, we got to be able to take care of that. This is how your body feels after you win a basketball game, just yeah. so you know. Mm -hmm. That's as good as feeling as there is, right? There you go. Wildcats. Yeah. Good stuff, fellas. Welcome to Gamble Pavilion, Stores, Connecticut. Fourth rank UConn welcomes in the New Hampshire Wildcats for doing a long time rivalry. Good shot. High three ball for Baker. Jackson Baker. Johnson taking a lot of one on one. Lee for Baker again. Heat check moment for Jackson Baker. Wow. Baker another three. Give him six, a new career high. He's got 20 points. We have to get after the ball. We have to stop playing our heels. We gotta sprint back, we gotta pressure the ball, we gotta be in position, we gotta communicate. Everything we do with that has gotta be aggressive. And when the shots go up, all five guys have to hit somebody so we can get them to go. And then all five guys gotta run. When we attack and they are set, we have to move the ball. And then we get the home base, or we get to rock it, and we get on the next play. We know what to do, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The deal is you don't you shouldn't need us. You shouldn't need us on the bench. It's about what happens on the floor. It's about you guys communicating. It's about you playing together. It's about you playing hard. If you're doing your job, we can sit down and shut up all night. That's what I like to do. But we got to go out there and get after their apps right now. Let's go. 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 Kill the glass. Kill the glass. Family, fellas. Roof on three. One, two, three. Roof. Amazing, it always feels good to play in front of family, friends, 
You know, it was great vibes, great energy. We definitely need this win. We we had a kind of a slow start, but we battled. We fought hard, fought the whole game. So, you know, a good win like that always feels good. Dior, every point that he scored in this game, I felt was massive. I think Dior, obviously being from New York, is kind of local, so he was excited to come home. But he's been practicing really well for about two and a half weeks now, and has stepped up to earn the right to play. And, and because he's been practicing well, he's confident we get out there and play. Good job, guys. Take care of business. Make sure you guys shower. I got a long bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you soap. Promise. You soap on three. One, two, three. You, you soap. soap. <laughs> well, Binghamton and Chris Walker, three for three from the floor out of the break. UNH with the turnovers has only taken one shot, and they missed it. It's been sloppy, and that's being kind partner for the second half of the Wildcats. Gets it to Robinson. He'll take the three. Rebound Walker. There's a lid on that basket for the Wildcats. They're 104 since halftime. And Nathan Davis wants to make some changes. Three guys about to check in as Pet Cash knocks it down. Interesting Wildcats to me look tired, partner. They haven't played since Saturday. Here it has not been a pretty second half. They were down four at the break, outscored 10 to 4 since then. From the corner, it's his fourth three-pointer. That's, you know, that's what they needed. Wow. Mid-range game this time. Shoulder into Harid, missed it, but Baker's right there, and the Wildcats have their first lead of the second half. Got five to shoot. Rises and ties the game with three seconds left. Timeout, Binghamton, 64-64 here in Durham. He's fearless. <laughs> He's a competitor, and Coach. He, unbelievable, the body control on a much taller defender. He's been going against taller guys his whole life. Fearless competitor, high off the glass, ties the game. Torrance, building speed, gets across midcourt, got it off in plenty of time, and we have overtime. Walker nails a three to start overtime. Pull up two, Hari knocks down a tough jumper. Back to a three-point lead for Binghamton. Miller all the way to the rim. Ida Robinson gets the steal. Back rim, no good. Rebound, Daniels. Crossover. Pull up. It's good. Ahmad Robinson puts UNH back in front. What a win for UNH. 79-73 in overtime. After trailing by 12 in the second half, they storm back for their first home win in conference play this season. Way to fight back, fellas. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. It's the America East on ESPN. It's a Saturday night conference showdown here in Lowell, Massachusetts at Songus Center. The Wildcats of the University of New Hampshire are in town to take on the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. We got a pretty good matchup here tonight. These are two teams with winning records that could really score the ball and a little bit of a rivalry just across the border from one another. Final seconds tick away, and New Hampshire picks up a victory and a big one for the Wildcats. 
give them credit as they move to 13 and eight, get a fifth win in America East play at five and three with New Hampshire hanging 89 points on them here tonight. You have to gain rebound. We got to stop talking about rebound and actually do the rebound. And Eric, no watching. If your man's at the three-point line and you go to check him and he doesn't go, everybody go crash and get involved in the fight, all right? Yes. Aggressive step-ups. We talk about step-ups all the time. Be aggressive. Go to them. If you go to the offensive player, you win. If you let them come to you, you lose. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. Hey, we got to talk. Got to do a better job talking. Be selfish. Whether you play one minute, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, be selfish. Champion your teammate plays all you can so we get a win. We're yeah. going to see this team again. Regardless of how the game goes today, yeah. just bust their ass to the message tonight. Let's go. Yes, Ball is up and it's Illyri Iofalia. URI transfer, redshirt junior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania to win the opening tip. Of course, the Catamounts in green and the Wildcats in white. team made eight shots in the first half and it's added up to a 25-24 catamount lead. March Madness is here. This one's been a little bit nuts today. Really well. So we're getting good shots. They're just not falling. I'd way rather hold them to 25 points and just figure it out on offense than have them score a will and then we have no idea if we either have to make shots or we lose. We just got step one, now we're about to do step two. Hey, yeah. way to drive. You're going to create so many opportunities for us if you get in that lane. Like, don't keep your mouth shut. Like, we just got to be more vocal. But this is what they mean by give us a chance by playing defense. Exactly. We're in the game. They're going to come out and still play good basketball because we know that's what they consistently do. Yep. So up to us, play good defense and we're going to hit shots the second half. Let's go on a run, bro. Tons of pressure on the ball. When they're in the post, you've got to fight. Use both hands until they f***ing call it. Don't let 12 back your ass in. If you catch it instead and do this, what are they doing? They're, they're, they're set. They're all coming. They're set, yep. So you got to shoot it, you got to drive it right away, or you've got to move it. And when we drive it, if you get to the elbow and you you can't do it, can't beat it, what are you going to do? Rock it. Right? Pick it up and pop it. Or drive it and get it with Barkley. Right? But don't drive it in there and just throw it up. Right? We can get great shots. When we get great shots, they're going to go in. Got it? Yes, sir. Let's go win. Let's go. Come on. Hey, we're winning this game. Let's go. Come on. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. Finish. Come on. We're winning, bro. Let's go. One point lead for Vermont at halftime, the last game of the regular season. Been a pretty good game here, too, thanks to an 11 to 2 run from the UNH Wildcats. In transition, wild runner goes for TJ Long, their leading score. here in Durham. No more timeouts for UNH. Robinson has to hurry. If he hits a three, it'll be a new career high. Let's take it right to the rim. Kick out Daniels. Nice catch. Takes a three. Draws a foul and scores! Oh, wow! Don't go anywhere. It's a four-point play opportunity. Wow. seconds and they would have signed for this just a few seconds ago missed it on purpose and a violation he went over the free throw line 
before the ball hit the rim is the call. And Robinson in a hurry. Three ball is blocked along the rebound, fires ahead to Bogues, and he'll dribble out the clock to give the Catamounts their 15th conference win in 16 tries this season. Yes, they've lost four in a row now, but you have to feel a little encouraged heading to the quarter final round on Saturday, which we've just learned will be against the Binghamton Bearcats. You know, I think that adversity is the, the difference between champions and teams that aren't. It's a, everyone um, has adversity out there. It doesn't matter how, how, how good your team is. You can't worry about what just happened. You can't worry about what's going to happen next. All you can do is focus on the task at hand and deal with that. And if you can do that, then you get a chance to get out of those situations as quickly as possible. Yeah, that one should hurt because you guys put forth the effort the last couple days and out there tonight to win the game. The difference was how many times did they take shots on our terms versus we took shots on their terms, right? How many times did we rush contested shots, whether they were in the lane or jump shots, or in the clock, they have to guard, and they don't do that. That's the difference. We fought, we defended well, when we worked it, we got great shots, we did everything we needed to do except for that, and they won the game. Now it's tournament time. Yep. So nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. yep. right. The only thing that matters is Saturday. Yep. It's one game. It's win in advance. Nothing happened before, nothing happened after. It's all about going out there and playing our ass off on Saturday. Questions? No. All right, let's be ready to go. Be ready to go, go guys. Be ready to go. Let's 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 go. Let's